I think there's a lot of elements that hook people. I think, you know, obviously the lead, Keanu Reeves, who's such a legend, people are familiar with him. But also it's a great story. It's super simple, you know. It's, it's a man seeking redemption, you know, who lost his wife and lost his puppy. And I think there's so much heart to that. And then as humans, we're so primal. So I think, you know, we enjoy seeing John Wick wreak havoc because I feel like deep down inside humans, we can't do those things in real life. So we like to watch and fantasize about it. So I think that's why we love John Wick. And also it's just, who, who, who doesn't love a good entertainment, action, jam-packed movie? So I actually worked with Chad on another film that Halle Berry was directing called Bruised, and Chad was helping out on that film with Halle. Obviously, Halle did the third John Wick and worked with Chad. So it was a brief interaction. I didn't really, you know, know him that well at the time. We didn't really, you know, communicate that much, more so action cut type of thing. And for whatever reason, he saw the work that I did on that, and there was the opening for the part of Tracker, and so he called me. And I still think there's a residual, of course, of the first movie, you know, that redemption story, that revenge, you know, but this movie has introduced a lot of new characters, a lot of new faces, a lot of new people. Tracker's in Tracker's world. You know, Tracker doesn't care less what other characters are doing or what's happening in the world. Tracker's on his mission, and his mission is John Wick, similar to others, but Tracker's been doing this. He's a professional tracker. And in my backstory and in my development of this character, I said to Chad, I pitched to him, I said, what if this guy's been tracking him since the John, first John Wick? You know, what if he's studying the John Wick movies almost as a documentary, you know? And so that's kind of something that I've implemented in my, my idea of tracker because this man's a lone ranger, it's, you know? And so for him, it's just like one target, John Wick, and then on to the next. The Western element was actually built in, like that was something that they specifically did and uh, I picked up on it obviously, you can't ignore his old pistol, you know, we won't get into the gun jargon, but you know, he definitely had, we'll call it the Western style pistol, which was modified a little bit, but that was just, you know, that went to show, you know, just that, that showed the side of him of just his um, object affinity and just really loving what he loves and he's a very tactile character from his notebook to his guns, to his dog, to his clothing. He's a very particular human. Paco is an, such an incredible collaborator and he's very poetic in his approach, you know, from the images that he uses. Building this character's wardrobe, um, you know, I brought in my binder and was just showing the team, Chad, different color palettes, different, you know, textures. We didn't have really an idea for this guy, you know? We went through a variation of character choices from leather pants at one point to maybe a fedora. And it took some time out of a few wardrobe fittings until we found that thing. And um, that thing is what you see on the screen. And just making sure that for me, having history with everything that he was wearing, down to his gloves, down to his scarf, down to his rings, down to the nail polish, like everything had you know, purpose. It wasn't just thrown on because it was aesthetically um, appealing. One moment in time, we're actually on set, then he turned over and he said, Mr. Anderson, because my last name's Anderson. And so I just stopped him for a second. I said, dude, dude, you can't, you just can't do that, man. I'm like, Mr. Anderson. I'm like, stop, Keanu. I got butterflies. I'm blushing. This is a moment for me right now. You got to stop. And uh, that was definitely a bucket list moment, having Keanu Reeves call me Mr. Anderson. Kind of get a goosebump saying it now. I was thrown into training right away with the 8711 gang uh, from Jiu Jitsu, Judo, boxing, Muay Thai, fitness, and on top of that, dog training. And that was every day from nine to five. It was definitely a process. But thankfully for me, I am a physical person. I am, I would consider a fit person, so it wasn't that bad. But I feel like it doesn't matter if you're a Navy SEAL, like that training is next level. But what I love about it is everybody's so passionate. I had to understand the dog's energy, but most importantly, build a relationship because Tracker, 
you know, he has the dog in this movie and that dog and him obviously had a pass. So for me, I spent literal hours with the dog. Sometimes we would just sit there. Sometimes I take the dog for a walk. You know, sometimes I would just, and I did a whole video with the dog, pictures. Um, that was that was probably the most of most time I've spent working with animals in my entire career. And it was definitely a pleasant process. And I will definitely be getting a dog after this movie is done. How thrilling, how exciting, edge of your seat experience that I had being on this movie. And, you know, hopefully the built-in fan base are happy with what we've been doing and then finding new fans.